Is it possible that New York is finally going to solve its rat and trash problem? Let's check it out. After months long search, New York City finally has a rat czar to declare war on the rodent population. Sorry. Mayor Adams revealing Kathleen Karate is his pick for the job. She has been with the Department of Education since 2015 and helped spearhead the DOE's efforts to fight rats in buildings. Now she's tasked with fighting the rodents throughout the city. Eyewitness News reporter Kimberly Richardson live in Harlem with more. Kimberly. Well, David, the mayor says just think of her as a rat maestro. After a nationwide search, some 900 applicants in just two weeks, Kathleen Karate just stepped into the role of the city's first director of rodent mitigation. And she kind of makes sense. She's a natural pick. Take a listen to this. When she was just 10 years old, Karate collected signatures in her neighborhood for a petition focused on, yes, anti-rat measures. The former elementary school teacher who also worked at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden Garden says getting the city's rodent population in check is a multi prong approach. Karate has a background in biology and urban sustainability and plans to draw on lessons learned at the DOE where she faced a similar problem in about 120 schools. After three years, techniques used there resulted in about 70% of the schools reaching compliance levels. Right out of the gate, she is focusing in on the newest rat mitigation zone in Harlem. Part of a $3.5 million plan will look at NYCHA complexes there. They will get new rat slabs that essentially stop rodents from burrowing in the ground. The new rat czar says she understands behavioral changes and cultural shifts do not happen overnight, but she's up for the challenge, joking there's a new sheriff in town. I will bring a science and systems-based approach to reducing New York City's rat population with a strong focus on cutting off the food, water, and a rat like, yeah, whatever. Shelter rats need to survive. We were really playing uh, whack-a-mole. And there was, uh, you know, as much work as Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, uh, what they have been doing, we basically put it solely on them. And so now this coordinated effort uh, through what uh, Kathy is going to do is going to allow us to put everyone as part of the team. So the Department of Sanitation, the Parks Department, uh, Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. I think that's very important, you know, just because, of course, you want your city to give the aura of being clean. You want it to authentically be clean. So I see no problem with it. I think it's a great improvement to try and make. And by the way, like the mayor, Karate hates rats and in her new role will make $155,000. When asked if Curtis Sliwa will I still get that rat internship, the one he volunteered for, the mayor simply laughed. Rats, nothing unites New York City quite like them. While we can all agree that their population is a problem that needs to be solved, there's some disparity about just how to do so. Producer Maggie Cole takes a look at where we are in the war against rats and revisits a woman who says she's so fed up, she's leaving. Get about the garbage pills. We got to make these landlords and, 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 and the tenants, and the tenants, like everybody got to be held accountable. Ruth McDaniels went viral in 2023 for her comments about the rats in her Harlem neighborhood. We've had rats the size of Crocs, just running up and down the street, like a Croc shoe. An average size eight, running up and down the street. But despite her viral fame, she has yet to see any improvement in the rat problem on her street. I'm not really doing data, but I do see increased rat holes in areas that there were none. So in my mind, they've expanded their territory. I'm council member Sean Abreu, and I represent District 7 in Northern Abreu is a member of what many refer to as the Rat Pack, a group of council members who work to pass bills to contain the fast-growing rat problem. All of, all of West Harlem, about 80% of my district, Mahan District 9, is part of the rat mitigation zone. The zones he's referring to are locations that the sanitation department have deemed the most rat infested in the whole city. This is based on data provided by 311 calls complaining about the rat problem. Citywide. I've always heard about the rat problem in New York, but I never really dove in to see how bad it actually was. You know what I mean? You always hear it in passing when people speak about New York or people want to down New York and talk down about them. They'll talk about the rat situation, but never really paid attention and fully grabs 
what type of problem they actually have. And this sounds pretty deep. And we have seen a 60% reduction in the rat mitigation zone, but by partnering with Commissioner Tish, we have seen a 68% reduction in rat sightings where the containerization project is taking place in West Harlem. My name is Chio Se. I'm a New York City Council member representing the 36th district, uh, which consists of the neighborhoods of Bedford Stuyvesant and Northern Crown Heights. You know, everyone will say nothing has changed, right? And I think that um, as long as you've seen a rat, um, you know, within a two week span, one week span, maybe even a month span of, of your life, you're going to still always believe that there's a rat problem, you know, within your community. I have cats. They are all night shoving themselves to try and look under the window because they're fighting in the garbage out there. I can hear them fighting in the garbage out there. And there's a lot of them. In, in my opinion, the trash is the single biggest source of the rats. Get that food waste out of the black bags, put it in containers. That is the best thing we can do in New York City to fight rats. And that's what Mayor Adams has his focus on at the Department of Sanitation. You know, I think he's actually done a lot when it's come to uh, rodent mitigation and, and, and sanitation um, improvements. Um, I don't think it's been happening fast enough. You know, where this admin did slip up is cutting that funding from some of these uh, nonprofit organizations that were providing additional sanitation services. Sanitation is something that we see. If you walk home from work, and you see that the trash is, is picked up, you notice a difference. Voters notice a difference, and it's really a quality of life issue. No one wants to live in a neighborhood where you have smelly trash out on the streets. So how are residents coping? And I, I'm, I'm going to Atlanta because I want a better quality of life. It's just disgusting here. And what does the city have to say to residents still dealing with rampant rat problems? Help is certainly on the way. I just hope that they, they hear this, right? I think that um, we've been doing a lot of this in our office with rat academy trainings, distributing rodent resistant garbage bins to neighbors, speaking about these solutions and, and hoping to, to convince people in terms of, you know, what the city is working on. And yes, it is taking long, but progress is being made. According to 311 data analyzed by CBS New York, citywide, rat sightings are down 13% from the year 2022 to 2023, but many residents still say they aren't seeing any difference. They're everywhere. I just see them all the time so much that I'm like, oh yeah, wildlife. And I mean, they're aggressive. Yeah, they're, they're becoming like ridiculously mutant and strong. Uh, no, they're, I see them, I still see them. Right, as long as we are continuing to throw out trash within those black garbage bags, we will still continue to see rats within the city. I could sit out here with a high pressure BB gun take those suckers out all day long i just choose not to she has had it she she has had it that person there she is done like you could just you could hear and feel and her colorful frustration is is radiant fight anymore i just feel like the priorities are in the wrong place but we knew that already Today, New York City unveiled what it calls a new super weapon in its so-called war on trash. It's a new automated garbage truck that loads from the side, and the city says it's rolling them out four years ahead of schedule. News Force Mark Santia shows us how they work. The days of trash piled up on New York City sidewalks are numbered. Mayor Eric Adams rolling up in the future of garbage collection. This container, this truck, designed to literally clean up city streets. Our goal is to take trash bags off our street, every single bag. Modeled after European sanitation systems like here in Villa Latina, Italy, rodent-proof containers and automated trucks soon to be in New York City four years ahead of schedule. We took an American truck chassis, the same engine and cab our sanitation workers already use, and a European body with an automated side loading mechanism and engineered them to work together. Soon, these piles of trash will be kicked to the curb. The new containers will be rolling out across West Harlem in the spring of 2025. Those look rodent proof to y'all? I don't know. I think a rat a mouse can still get up in there, fam. I, I don't know. They have to show me how is that considered or deemed rodent proof. We'll be rolling out across West Harlem in the spring of 2025. Melvin Johnson owns the Harlem Biscuit Company and lives in the neighborhood. He thinks the plan is a recipe for success. As a resident, I'm really tired of, of seeing, you know, piles and piles of trash. A pilot program has been in place here for 10 blocks, and the mayor says 
it immediately cut down on rat interactions. Rat sightings fell by more than two thirds year over year. The city says these automated two-person trucks, which will eventually be rolling across the five boroughs, will also save wear and tear on workers who have spent decades lifting heavy trash bags. Fully half of the department's line of duty injuries are sprains and strains. These containers will eventually hold trash from some of the city's densest buildings and help manage the 44 million pounds of trash produced every day. Containerizing is a proven solution. Mark Santia, News 4 New York. A pilot program in the city aimed at reducing trash and rats is being expanded. Mayor Adams made the announcement in his State of the City address today. CBS 2's Natalie Dudridge spoke with some, though, who say the program comes at a cost to drivers. I was thinking that, will people be laid off? Tossing garbage bags into these new shared trash bins instead of piling them up on the sidewalk. The sanitation department is testing a container system to clean up the city. And that's a great thing because years past, it was a lot of litter. Because Roger Maloney lives in a 10 block zone that's part of the pilot program from 143rd to 153rd streets between Broadway and Amsterdam, where increased garbage pickup six days a week is also being tested to help reduce rodents, a pesky issue we've reported on for years. We've had rats the size of Crocs, just running up and down the street like a Croc shoe, an average size eight. Fast forward a few months since the city cracked down. I think I have noticed that. Less rats, definitely. I don't know if there's just less rats because it got cold outside. <laughs> Question. I'm interested this to see is, yeah. what it's like in the spring. The sanitation department says the results are clear. We have seen rat sightings in, on those 10 blocks go down 68%. The city says the data comes from 311 calls, which also reports rat sightings are down 16% in other mitigation zones. Our city closed down the all-you-can-eat rat buffet. Due to the pilot's success, the mayor announced in his State of the City address he's expanding the program to West Harlem and beyond. But drivers say the large trash containers come at a cost. It is taking up parking and it is taking up space. That one's taking a lot, of, a lot of parking space. The city responded these shared bins only take up 1% of parking. So you're going to deal with parking or you want to deal with rats? Which one is it going to be? Spaces, but here's an example of the issue this double parked truck already causing some congestion. The pilot is part of a larger ongoing citywide program. Starting March 1st, all businesses must put trash in containers instead of on streets or face fines. In Hamilton Heights, Natalie Dudridge, CBS 2 News. And officials add that commercial trash accounts for about half of the 44 million pounds of garbage the city produces every day. Whatever it takes to get rid of those rats. Keeping rats under control has been an ongoing conversation between the health department and city residents. CBS 2's Alicia Reed reports on recommendations from what's known as the Rat Academy. Rats will gnaw through just about anything softer than steel, including cement and wood, according to the city health department. They also breed quickly and only need an ounce of food and water each day to survive. Yes, we saw two big rats scurry across the, the road here. If you see a lot of rats, their food source is nearby. With 8 million residents in New York City, DOH says the average household produces about 8 pounds pounds of food waste each week, enough to feed 19 rats in that span of time. And when we put our trash away, we put it in the bins. Allison Levy has the right idea. Closed garbage cans with secure lids will deter rodents. This week, the Department of Health held a so-called Rat Academy to educate people on how to reduce rats. This map shows some of the city's hot spots in pink. Vermin leave urine and droppings everywhere they go. In order to destroy the path that other rodents will follow, clean regularly and use bleach solution. Also, sealing holes and cracks in walls. I've seen people just drop things everywhere, but then I try to just pick it up. The city is currently removing abandoned dining structures, which are ideal habitats for rats. We should definitely not have permanent dining sheds. To help in the battle against rats, the sanitation department is considering changing the time you can put out trash from 4 to 8 p.m. 
Residents using bins with sealed lids could put out as early as six. I think that's a great idea. We need to minimize the amount of trash that's on the street available to rats. Rats can fit through any hole the size of a quarter, and mice can fit through anything the size of a dime. Keep that in mind if you see any openings near the foundation of your home. In Hell's Kitchen, Alicia Reed, CBS 2 News. This is just three days worth of trash, most coming from New York City. And that claw is taking it to be burned into electricity. But we're not actually in New York City. We're in Jersey. Once the garbage man comes and picks it up, you don't think any more about it. But it has a long way to go after that. None of New Yorkers' waste is processed oh. in the city. Instead, it ends up as far away as Ohio, Pennsylvania, and even South Carolina. So getting trash from here to here takes thousands of workers, trucks, trains, cranes, and even barges, operating nonstop to ship waste across the East Coast. Rain, snow, hail, storm, there's no stopping us. And it all costs the city hundreds of millions. Here's what actually happens to New York City's 3.2 million tons of trash a year. New York City's Department of Sanitation sends its fleet of 2,000 garbage trucks to start picking up at 5 a.m. You have to keep active. Some guys like to work out, some guys don't. Basically, it depends on you. What do you do? Me? I don't work out. This is my workout. This is my daily workout. That's Frank, a 23-year veteran sanitation worker. Well, you get immune to the smell. You don't smell garbage, you smell money. Second to see how solid it is. You can tell when the truck is full. Frank heads to the dump station in the Upper East Side. By then, the sun's coming up. We are currently at 91st Street MTS doors will open as the truck comes in and there's radiation detectors that will read the truck. Trucks pause at the way station to help the city keep track of how much trash New Yorkers produce. Then handles tilt the hopper. Then she'll push the blade and the blade will push the, the material all the way out to clear the whole truck. It's roughly 450 to 600 tons a day. Tractors Jeez. move the trash into the containers beneath the ground. It's sort of a dance. One FDL will clear the wall and one FDL will blow containers. Getting the material containerized as quickly as possible and sealed keeps that smell down. A stamper then packs in the garbage. Mattresses are used like a sponge to sop up anything left over. When we have garbage on the floor, it'll take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to load a container. Once the Department of Sanitation seals a container and slides it out to the dock, responsibility then goes to Covanta. The waste to energy company handles two marine transfer stations in the city. Containers are picked up by the crane and put on the barge. 48 containers go on the barge. Every one of these containers represents a truckload that we have taken off of the city streets and out of the tunnels, reducing carbon emissions and reducing congestion and wear and tear. I wonder if they've ha ever had one of those containers go into the water and what's the fine on something like that? Putting trash or accidentally dropping trash into the water? I know that got to come with a hefty fine on the city's infrastructure. A tug attaches to the loaded trash barge. Tug captain Jason Harris is now in charge. He gets a go-ahead for a 9.30 a.m. departure. What you see here is, is called Hell's Gate. This is the upper end of the East River. Tides play a major factor in the times that we can transfer barges. You can't go against the tide when it's max tide. It's too strong. We would actually come to a dead stop on this boat and barge. You wait until you can go with it. Quite often, a barge gets, gets filled up, and we will have to wait two, three, maybe four hours before the tide is, is in the favor. He navigates this heavy load safely along one of the busiest waterways in the world, down the East River, through New York Harbor to mm. Staten Island. Three hours later, the tug and barge back up into the Global Transfer Station. It is an inherently dangerous operation to move heavy equipment overhead. Then a train takes it to one of Covanta's waste to energy facilities. It can also get there via truck. All of Manhattan's residential trash goes to waste energy facilities like this one to be burned and turned into electricity. This facility processes up to a million tons of waste That's annually. Smart. Once the trucks scale in and come up to the tipping floor, they dump in front of one of these bays. Tractors push the trash into a massive storage pit, 93 feet deep and 270 feet long. Between eight and 9,000 tons are in the garbage a very different way since I've been working here. We create a lot of garbage as, as a population. Two claws work together in tandem. 
dumping trash into hoppers. That's what I was sitting here thinking. I was like, man, when you look at it from that perspective, you're like, man, we we do we produce a lot of trash. To the incinerator. Romeo's an expert giant claw operator. 21 years of playing the game. There is no shortage of fuel for our boilers. Toy Story is the first thing everyone thinks of. Disney actually got inspiration for the Toy Story 3 incinerator sequence from a Covanta plant. The incinerators burn the trash at 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It takes one to two hours to burn an entire hopper load. I've now entered the control room area of the plant. This is the brain of the operation. Yes, it is. <laughs> and here's your brain. You've got camera views of the combustion zone. How important are you for this, this place running correctly? How important am I? I am the guy. <laughs> I, I am the guy. He's in the hot seat. Russell monitors as the furnace heats up steam, turning this turbine and generating enough energy to power this plant and 46,000 homes in the region. After everything's burned, all that's left over is ash and metal. This magnet pulls off enough metal to make 21,000 cars. The leftover ash goes to cover landfills. Next, the plant tackles those nasty fumes that burning trash causes. First leftover gases go through a scrubber reactor. A lime slurry cleans any acid gases, and activated carbon absorbs pollutants. Then it goes through a bag house, basically a bunch of filters. So what's left coming out of that smokestack? Constituents of the flue gas is what's in normal air, like nitrogen, carbon dioxide, moisture. The alternative to this would be going to a landfill. Waste to energy does produce CO2 emissions. But in a year, this process eliminates a million tons of CO2 emissions a landfill would have produced. We generate a very small amount of methane. The methane we offset from a landfill results in an actual decrease of CO2 emissions. The city hopes to keep moving trash on waterways to facilities like this one. It's all part of its goal of becoming zero waste to landfill by 2030, but that is becoming harder and harder to reach. Only about 30% of New York City's waste turns into energy. The rest ends up in harmful methane-producing landfills as far away as South Carolina and Ohio. And it takes a significant investment to move it. Every year exporting trash costs the city about $400 million. So why does New York City send its trash so far away? In 1881, New York City streets were notoriously filthy, so dirty people were getting sick. So the Department of Sanitation was established to clean up the streets. And the department did help mop up the city, but the city quickly ran out of room. You heard us say the word mob, right? Sanitation, mob, okay. To put all of its trash. In the early 1900s, the city turned a dumping trash into the ocean. Even though it was illegal, as much as 80% of the city's trash ended up in the sea. This continued until 1934, when a Supreme Court case forced the city to stop ocean dumping. In the 70s, incinerators used for much of the 1900s were closed down because they didn't meet the EPA's clean air standards. So the city opened up landfills across the five boroughs, including at one point, the world's largest. In 1973, New York even built out Lower Manhattan using trash mounds. But even that wasn't enough. With nowhere else to put it, the city began sending its waste to other states. Most of the landfills in this area have been closed down, so the available landfills are getting further and further away. Exporting trash is a costly practice with a big environmental footprint, and it puts the burden on communities far from these shiny skyscrapers. For now, New York City's only choice is to keep exporting the trash. But ultimately, the department says the best solution would be getting New Yorkers to waste less altogether. Trash is like one of those things that you put it outside and forget about it. I think everybody should know what happens to what they get rid of. If you know where it's going and you don't like where it's going, maybe you'll find ways to recycle things. I would never take anything home because my wife wouldn't allow it. But there'll be a but there. If I see something that's Star Wars, I'm going to look for it and make, if it's good, I'm going to take it home.